Welcome to part four of the circle jump series. In this video, we're going to start making our menu screens. So we have a number of different screens we're going to make, one for the title screen, one for the game over screen, and also a settings screen. So they're going to all inherit, or they're all going to share a lot of properties. So we're going to inherit from a base scene. So I'm going to make that base scene first with a canvas layer. And I'm just going to call this base screen. And I'm going to save that in the UI folder. So this is going to be all the things that my screens have in common. Well, they're going to start with a margin container set to full rect and custom constants set all these to 20. So that's going to ensure that nothing in my on my screen gets too close to the edge. And then we're going to have some various things going from the top to the bottom. So we're going to use a VBox container for that. The VBox container, we can leave everything default. I think so, yeah. We'll come back and mess with it if we have to. Probably want to space things out. But in that VBox container, we're going to have a a label. This is going to be the title. So we'll put title here. All right, that's going to be centered. And I need a font for that. All right, so that's my title of whatever screen I'm on. And then underneath, I'm going to have a row of buttons. That row of buttons is going to be an HBox container. And I don't have any buttons to put in there yet. The default screen doesn't have any, but we'll put our ones for the various screens in there. And the HBox container needs to align from the center. And we'll probably have some separation. And we're going to name this buttons and we're going to duplicate it because we need to have two rows of buttons with the same properties. And then lastly, I'm going to add a tween here. That's going to be for animating the title coming on or the screen coming on and going off of visibility. And we're going to start with our offset being 500, right? They're going to, it's going to start off over here and then move onto the screen with a script. So we're going to add a base screen script. This script is going to do pretty much nothing but the animation. So we're going to get a reference to our tween. And then we're going to have two methods here, appear and disappear. And both of them will just be animating the tween. We're going to interpolate the property the cell for self. We're going to interpolate offset dot offset x. And for appear, we're going to go from 500 to 0. Uh, we'll go to the next line here. We'll go from half a second, and we'll use we're going to use tween dot trans back and ease in out. And then we'll call tween.start. So that's a peer. And then I'm going to copy that because the only difference between a peer and disappear is that we're going to do the reverse motion. So we're going to start at 0 and go to 500. OK, now we can make our first scene. So we'll say new inherited scene. We're going to inherit from the base scene we're going to set our label up here this will be where we put the title now again these are going to be very no frills to start with right we want to just get something functional before we spend too much time on making things look fancy and then we need to add some buttons in here and the buttons in the buttons row are going to be texture buttons so the texture button, this is going to be, I'm going to use the name of the buttons to define what they do, because we're going to have maybe a play button in more than one place. So we have a play button, 
the texture we're going to use is in the assets. There's our play button. And then we want to duplicate that. Actually, before we duplicate that, I'm going to put that in a group called buttons because that will let us refer to these and get a list of all the buttons that we have. Um, title screen. Let's, let's name that so we know what that's called. So the play button, I'm going to duplicate. And this is going to be a button to call settings. And for that, we're going to use a different image uh, from the buttons. We're going to use the little gear. Drop that in there. There's our button. Now, one thing I noticed, everything's very smooshed up against the top. So in the base screen, we probably want to space out yeah, on this VBox container something fairly large so that they'll be spaced out. There we go. Titles at the top, buttons near the center. So that's pretty much all we have to do for our title screen. And then the other scenes are going to be the same. So I'm going to do those real quick. Inherit another one from base screen, which is going to be our settings. And the settings screen, we actually need two, we're going to need two rows of buttons. So we're going to say settings here. We'll save that. And then, and there are buttons for settings. We got sound and music toggles, and we have a return button that'll take us back to the main screen. And we have one more, which is our game over screen. And here's the game over screen. We're just going to have a button that takes you home and a button that lets you play again. So to bring them all together, we're going to make one more new scene. I'm just going to use a plain node as a container for holding all these screens. And in it, we're going to put our title screen, settings screen, and game over screen. And so all scre three screens are like piled up on there, but they're off the screen. And this is where the switching is going to happen. Pulling onto the screen whichever one we want to see. So we're going to have a we're going to need to send a start game signal to the main scene when we press that button. We're going to need to keep track of which screen is currently on and active. In the ready we need to register all of our buttons, right? We need to connect them up. So we're going to make a function to do that. Call that here. And then we're going to also going to have a change screen button, which changes to whichever one we want. Title screen being the one we want to change to first. So let's define those. The register buttons is going to get, uh, get all the buttons. That's get tree, and we want to get nodes in group buttons. Right? That will get us all the buttons that we made. Then we can go through them in a loop and connect their signals. We want to connect the pressed signal to a function we'll make locally. And it's going to be called on button pressed. And then we're going to send along with it the button's name so we know which one we pressed. OK. And then on button pressed name, we'll determine which one we pressed. So let's match match the name. If we pressed the home button, we want to change screen to the title screen. If we pressed the play button, then we want to change screen 
to null. We want to have no screen active. And we're going to emit that signal so the game knows to start. Uh, if we picked the settings button, we're going to change screen to the settings screen. And then we could press the sound and music ones, but I don't have anything to do with those yet. So we're going to hold off on that. And then we need to define our change screen function. OK, so when we change to a new screen, first of all, if there's a current screen, right? There may be or there may not be. If there's a current screen, we need to make it disappear. So current screen dot disappear. We just call its disappear function that we made. And then we want to wait for its tween to complete. Tween completed signal. We wait for that to finish. Then we're going to set the current screen equal to new screen. And if new screen isn't null, then we're going to call current screen dot appear and do the exact same thing. We will yield and wait for that tween to finish. So now we can actually try it out. If we run the screens by themselves, we should see the title screen appear. If we press settings, we go to the settings screen. These buttons don't do anything yet, but return will take us back to home. And play is going to start the game. So we would we sent out the start game signal. So we need to connect that to main, and we will have the game start. But first, we need also something to call if the game ends. So we will make a game over function, which is going to change screen to the game over screen. We can call that from main. So let's go over to our main. And we're going to add in the screens collection. And we can start connecting this stuff up. So screens is going to have a signal start game. We can connect that to our new game function that we already have. We can stop calling new game and ready. We don't want to do that. So that should be enough for us to run it. The game comes up. When I hit play, the game starts. Now the game starts a little too fast. So I think we probably want in our screens function here to give a slight delay when we hit play. We change screen to null, and then we're going to yield, create a timer, let's just say for a half second, and we'll wait for timeout. Now let's play the game. Title screen comes up. We can still bounce around from menu to menu, but when we hit play, the game starts playing. Now we need to do something when we end, when we go off the screen. So let's open our jumper, and we're going to add a signal died. So we'll this will emit when we die. And right now, we have a dive function. So we are removing ourselves, but we need to emit that signal. And then in main, we can connect that signal just like we did with its captured. Connect the died signal to on jumper died. And then, so what do we need to do when the jumper died? Well, when the jumper dies, I want all the circles to go away. And the easiest way to do that is if we go over to our circle scene, our circle node, we're going to add that to, we're going to make a group for that. Then in our main script, what we can do is just call get tree. We can say call group which lets us call a function on every member of a group. So on circles, we'll call our implode function. On our, We'll call game over on our screens. Okay, that should do it. So let's give it a try. 
Here's our play screen. We play. When we go off the screen, we get game over. We play again. Right, we can keep playing. Let's check the timeout on the circle. Oh, we saw the game over screen twice. That means our signal, our player must be sending out the signal twice. Why is the player sending out the signal twice? Well, over here, we call jumper.die, right? When the circle runs out, which is fine. But on the jumper, when we do die, we send out the signal, but QFree deletes the jumper. When the jumper is deleted, it triggers this screen exited signal on the visibility notifier, and it's calling die again. So what we need to do is only send out this signal here. And that will solve that. Let's go ahead and let the circle run out and make sure. There we go. Okay, that'll do it for this part. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see the next update when it comes out. We're getting pretty close to having the full working framework of the game, so we can start talking about how we're going to get this onto mobile. All right, I'll see you in the next video.